is Peggy from May Arts Ribbon, and today I'd like to show you how I made this adorable birthday card with the stamps from Craft Lounge. Is that too stinking cute? These are called, well, I guess the set's called Crystal Clears right down here at the bottom. And look at all these stamps that you get. Is that too stinking cute? And I didn't have to think hard because I love when they do them in color for me because I just colored them up with my Copic markers. So we're going to do that card. We're going to use another product that I got called Sparkly Fluff. We used that on the card. The inks I'm going to use are Memento Black. I love that because you can do your inks with those, uh, your markers, and they don't bleed all over the place and be yucky. We're going to use Versamark. I'm going to use some of my Nestability die cuts. I'm going to use a little bit of this double-sided tape. I forget what it's called right now. I just call it double-sided tape. And a couple of punches. Well, let me clear some stuff off here and let's get started. Now on this stamp set, I really liked it because there's a variety of words. I love word stamps, especially the smaller ones. They go on your card so nicely. And again, I really like the way that they're colored. That really helps me because I'm a little challenged in that department. But look at this. It's a hard plastic and it has holes in there so you can put these in a notebook and store them. What a neat way to store these. So what I want to do first, I want, I want to use them all, but I couldn't. So I'm going to use this for the crystal ball first. And I'm going to use a little clear block here. Just stick it on there. And what I want to do, let me bring my card back in. I don't know if the camera can zoom in a little bit and see. I wanted to do some kind of a printed paper, but I didn't want to take away from my stamp itself of the little girl. So I actually am going to use the crystal ball and some words, and I'm going to stamp with Versamark. Now Versamark is a watermark-based stamp pad, and it's going to give me that tone-on-tone -tone kind of look there. So let me show you how easy that is. Just stamp that little bad boy right up there. And you just want to stamp all over. How I do it is I usually start in the center, even though I know it's going to be covered up. You just never know. And you stamp down and bring it up. I'm going to do three or four of these and then show you how we got her done. You want to make sure you stamp off of the paper a little bit because you want it to look like a piece of printed cardstock. Now the other nice thing about Versamark, I don't know if you're aware of it or not, you can emboss this. So I could have done the inking all over, went in with some clear embossing powder and made it a little more raised. But for this particular card, I knew I was going to cover most of it, so I didn't want to really go to all that trouble, I guess. I'm going to put a little piece right there. Are you getting the idea how I'm doing that? Just trying to get it covered so it looks like printed paper. I think I'll put just a smidge right there. Yep, like that. We'll do a couple more here at the top and we'll keep going. bring that a little closer. Can you see that? So it just gave me like a two-tone look there. Then the next thing I did, I took that one off and I picked up word and on this one I actually picked the word I see, which should be, I'll pull this off of here so I can see, ha ha ha, I see. There it is. Just stick it right on there. And I'm just going to put that all over the center here. So let me do that real quick. There's our background. Right like that. Okay, let me clean this up and we'll do the next step. Now the next thing I want to do is to show you how I was able to use the sparkly fluff right here on the bottom. All I did was take a piece of paper and I'm going to use the Martha Stewart Stars Border Punch. And I don't know if you've done this before, but you simply, I always start in the center, stamp it, stamp it, no, I punch it. And then on the side they give you a little image that you can line up to make sure you're going to get the right amount of distance between your little stars, like so. And then we're going to move it to the other side. Well, if I can see over there. It's hard to do it sideways. All right, all right, let me get that out of the way. And this is where I came in with my tape. And I'm just going to put the tape right along where the openings are for the stars because this is a double-sided tape and it tears which is real nice. There we 
go. So, if you, I don't know if the camera can see, there are a couple spaces where, because the stars go up a little bit, I'm going to trim those out. Let me do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, now I've got my score, and it, I remember the name of this, it's called score tape. Oh, for heaven's sakes. So now I've got that there, and the sticky side is up. I'm just simply going to take some of my sparkly fluff. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the sparkles in there. And I, I'm very generous with it because I want to make sure I get it on all of them. So I push it down in there because, you know, we can push it right back in the jar when we're finished. And I'm just pressing it right in there. And I did this just because there were stars in the base of the table where the little girl stamp. And I wanted to kind of bring it all together. So there you are. So there you are. Right, pull this off when we get ready. Let me clean up my mess. We'll assemble our card. Okay, I went ahead and put that on the back. Just taped it on there. Now I've got my score tape right here, so that'll help hold that down so that the fluff doesn't get all over my card. So there's the base of my card. So we'll lay that aside for a minute. Now I'm going to use the little stamp that has the girl looking into the ball. And again, I'm going to use the black memento. This is a great ink, once again, to use when you're using markers, especially your Copics, because they won't bleed. And... Um, it, it's just a great, uh, it's one of my all-time favorite inks. Some of that fluff off there. I'll center this girl up. Like so. Come off of there. Look at that. That is, I am just amazed at how great that stamps. So those little acrylic stamps are pretty awesome. So I'm going to take her off of there and set it aside. Now, I don't know, this isn't really a video to show you how to color with Copic markers, but just to give you an idea... These are all the colors that I used. So in Copic marker coloring, you're going to do a lot of blending of colors together. And I'm just going to real quick do the ball just to show you how I did that. But it's not really to show you how to do Copic. That's a whole other video. But let me just show you real quick how you color up that ball. Get these colors out of here. I used three colors. This one is BG101. And let's see, I'm going to color that up. I mainly want to do this to show you that that memento ink doesn't bleed, which is really cool. So there's that. I took the little bit darker one, B05, and just put little smidges around the edges, like so. Then I came in with zero. Now some people, I will tell you this little trick, some people think because it says that it's a blending it is really not just for blending. It's called a colorless blender. It will actually remove ink. So if you make a boo-boo, you can take this in and move that ink around and it takes it right off of there. So what I did on mine is I actually erased a lot of the ink out of the center to give it that crystal look. And that's how I did it. So there you go. That gives you the look there. What I always do at the end of all of my images, I go in with a B000 and outline the whole thing to give it a shadow. But that's how you do it. It takes a little more time to ink it up, but you get the idea. Okay, so then all I did after that, I layered that on there. You can go ahead and ink this up on the edges if you like to. This is where May Arts Ribbon comes in. And this one is actually... It's kind of a sheer ribbon, and it's got a wire in it. It's called D is in dog, F is in Frank, 13. And I like that size ribbon. It's a 5 8 inch ribbon. And all I did for this one was take little scraps, actually, that I had, folded them in half, and put them right under the card. I did it in threes just to give it a look. I put pop dots behind there to pop her up. So we have this on the back. That's your base card. We're going to bring these in. You know I can put those together real quick because I can still color her, like so, scissors, I'll just put one for the sake of video time, oh and I put it on the wrong side, but you know what, it could be the right side today, and use some foam dots, and there is my card, 
voila how simple was that just using some of this wonderful I'm telling you these stamps are absolutely fantastic and I like the little sparkly fluff so there's your finished card well that's everything I can show you for today make sure you stop over at May Arts and get yourself some ribbon and don't forget to find out where you can get these crafty lounge stamps they are awesome have a great day bye